Today we're looking at the Ichimoku Cloud technical analysis tool to trade some familiar markets. For this we're joined by Nicole Elliott, a fellow of the Society of Technical Analysts and a specialist in charting with Ichimoku Cloud. And Nicole has also written a book on the subject, an introduction to Ichimoku Kinko Clouds. Uh, Nicole, welcome. I'm very interested. One of the reviews said Ichimoku charting has been embraced by market professionals because it works. Why does it work? What is Ichimoku? It was a system developed in Japan in the 1960s by a stockbroker uh, called Goichi Hosoda. Uh, this was pre-laptop uh, computers, etc. So he had an army of interns <laughs> sworn to secrecy, and by backtesting, he developed a method that would help you spot trends, stick with them, and know where they had turned. And by a trend, we're talking about something that lasts at least a few weeks, right. if not months, you know, depending on how things pan out. Um, and it's based on moving averages, but they're not Western ones. Uh, we plot, first of all, the candlesticks, um, and for those of you who don't use them yet, I would urge you to have a good look because they, they're much more immediate. You can see the sort of intraday moves. You can read them more quickly. Uh, they were, of course, then plotted on white paper with a graphite pencil, and so the traditional ones are always a black for a down day and white, or i.e. no fill, uh, for an up day, so that's how, how, how they traditionally done. Then we add a nine day and a 26 day moving average. These were designed with daily charts, nine and 26 day. Now instead of using the closing price as us Westerners do, it's the midpoint of the day, so the halfway right. point between high and low of that day. And those are plotted conventionally. And if the nine day, the red one in this chart here, is above the 26 day, the black line, that means you're bullish and you stay long. Then the clever bit is the cloudy bit that you can see, that sort of big sort of grey snake that goes right. around. This is, by the way, daily price of spot gold. And I've chosen this one because you can see how it's like a leopard and it's shift changed its spots, hasn't it? In that, you know, since sort of early February, we're sort of meandering around slowly, not doing anything in particular. And of course the moving averages are rubbish. <laughs> and now it's all kicked in this month and now it's in working. So the moving averages are working and the cloud also is picking up smartly. The it's the three. 9 plus the 26-day moving average divided by 2 plotted right. 26 days ahead. The second line is the difference between the highest price of the last 52 days, the lowest mm -hmm. price of the last 52 days, again plotted. So it's the midpoint of those two extremes plotted 26 days ahead. The colour of the cloud is usually just grey or whatever you want, typical London colour. Um, and if your price is above the cloud, it's also confirming the bullish trend that your moving averages have already told you. The final line is the blue one, which is called the lagging line. It's plotted 26 days behind today's price, and it's merely the closing price. So it tries to take out some of the noise of the candles. Mm -hmm. You're getting a, a sort of smoother effect. Um, and that also helps you decide whether you've got a steady trend or a bit of a dodgy one and things like that. So it's a collection of tools, really, rather than just one tool. It's uh, an overview using a number of different uh, existing um, technical analysis tools that people have in their toolbox. Very much. It's in fact that it's in the name Ichimoku Kinko Hu means a snapshot overview uh, from a high mountain of a chart, mm. and it tries to give you a balanced view of what you're dealing with. It also gives you loads of levels of support and resistance. So as well as the candlesticks and conventional tools that we use to find support and resistance. Mm -hmm. My first support in this case is the nine day average itself. The second support is the 26 day moving average itself. And then the top of the cloud and the bottom of the cloud. So I've got four sort of levels that are going to try and start. When it, we start turning, it'll give me warning signals. So it's excellent when you're doing either option trading and you're trying to increase positions or decrease them or hedge some bits or, you know, you, you sort of want to build a position in stages or reduce it and reverse mm -hmm. it in stages, you've got, you know, four levels of entry and exit to, to, to prompt you. Okay, so this is the daily chart of gold. Explain where you would position your trade on this based on Ichimoku. 
Based on Ishimoku, you currently have been long from the very beginning of June when the red line crossed above the black one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's your first sign. Then you probably would have added to the long position when the candles themselves broke above the cloud because mm -hmm. at that point the cloud would have acted as resistance mm -hmm. so if you've got a close above the top of the cloud mm -hmm. you would have added to that long position you would have stayed long perhaps you might even have added to your long position every time the candle hit the red line you'd buy some more buy some more buy some more now the candles haven't hit the red line for a while and it did get a bit sort of do lally really um it's not overbought as such that doesn't matter and the distance from where you are from the cloud is irrelevant too so at the moment you'd be fully invested fully long um possibly buying some more when it hit the red line but if you were to close below the red line at that point, you'd start reducing that long position. Okay, so that's an alert One for step a, at a, a, time. a small change of strategy. Correct. Um, how, how, do you know where to put your stop on using these, uh, this analysis, or uh, do you have to employ some other form of analysis to work out where the stop Well, I like going? to use them in, in stages. Do you right, see what I mean? Right. If I had a uh, first stop would be below the red line, a close below, then below the black line. Yeah. And then if we drop below the cloud, I would actually start going short then. Yeah. yeah. yeah? Okay, all right. Okay, so that's gold. Um, so at the moment, um, the chart still showing up. Let's move on to your second chart and uh, take a look at this. I think this is euro dollar that you've got on here. Now, what we've done with this chart, actually, we've 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 left it with what the the, the toolbox that we employ here has given us in terms of colour. So rather than the, the black and white, which was originally, as you say, just the pencil colouring in of certain direction of candles and so forth, and the cloud, we've actually put on what was given to us in the initial uh, package. So we've got different cloud colours. Is there any reason for this particularly? Um, well, what it is, the difference in the colour of the clouds is based on whether the average line is in the middle or the 52-day line is above. Right. Right? Which, which, which of the two lines that make up the clouds, which one is above, above the other right. one? Um, and Obviously, in a bull market, you'd expect the shorter one to be above the longer term mm -hmm. line. Yeah, um, but in cloud charting, what you're looking for is when the cloud becomes very thin, and when it's thin, it's easier to break that cloud. It's not acting as such a barrier, um, and you can see on the very left of that chart how it sneaked through. Uh, that that little skinny little cloud there, mm -hmm. um, and then managed to onwards and upwards um, until it sort of pulled back. You can see the way it pulled back below the red line. That was your mm -hmm. first sort of warning. Now this is a weekly chart um, and the system wasn't designed for weekly charts but daily ones but I find it works really really well. If you're a sort of long-term investor use weekly charts with this system it works really well. Um, what you can see now we're very much in bear mode with the red yep. line below the black one. Mm -hmm. But, 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 we are beginning to perk up, aren't we? You've had mm -hmm. your first little signal um, three weeks ago when you saw a close clearly above the red line and on the black one. Mm -hmm. So it got to there and went, mm. It looks potentially today that we might get a close above the black line, the 26-week moving average. That would be your next signal saying things are turning, things are going. Now, that blue line, the lagging line, it's currently struggling with the candles themselves who act as resistance of 26 weeks ago. Right. So that lagging line is struggling, but were it to see a decent close clearly above the candles weeks ago, that would be another sign that, hey, we're on our way. Now, we do face a whopping great big fat cloud yep. ahead of us. Mm -hmm. So that is pretty formidable resistance. But, but, were we to start edging inside the cloud, I would expect 
Well, it doesn't have to be a fast or a slow move. It doesn't, it doesn't really matter. But your next level of resistance is going to be the very top of that cloud. And mm -hmm. notice how it drops in steps. Yep. Yep. And the reason it does that is that we've had a very significant high, which has completely dominated the cloud, that, that particular, uh, the line, yeah? The, the high of 52 days ago, the low of 52. Mm -hmm. So the high has dominated, whereas the low has been gradually getting lower. Hence that why the top of that cloud is so flat. Mm -hmm. and, and you can see it, it's that, that, that um, high in 2018, yeah. early 2018, that is dominating for yeah. so long. Yeah. Um, so, so here you can see, I think you can see in stages how, say maybe if you're a fund manager or somebody like that, this is m certainly not for day traders. Yeah, not right. for day traders. Okay, so you're mm -hmm. hesitating until we get a close past the bottom. Well, of I'm the hoping we'll get it. No, I'm already long of the right. euro. I've done a little long already on on the the, the close above the red line. Yeah. yeah, and now I'm hoping for a little bit more and a bit better and a bit more momentum and a bit more oomph. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, moving on, and uh, you've got another uh, familiar chart that we've got, which is uh, sterling against uh, the US dollar. Again, uh, now this is a daily chart actually, isn't it? That's right. We're going back to dailies here. Red and green, which is Western stockbroker style, <laughs> which green is go up because bullish markets are good, bearish markets are bad. Anyway, uh, but you can see how we're just beginning to turn here too. And that's something you want in foreign exchange when you're looking at basically the US dollar, you want the other currencies to be marching to mm -hmm. the same tune as each other, right? So from the weekly chart we saw we had a few mm -hmm. signs. Here we've got a little bit more detail and you can see already for nearly a fortnight it has been flashing, well longer actually, for, for on and off you see we've been hovering around the nine day moving average. Mm -hmm. Now yeah. we seem to be managing to hold above it a bit better. Um, despite the Tory party. Um, now we've got possibly today a clear cross between the nine day and 26 day moving mm -hmm. average, totally conventional. Look at the lagging line. That one's struggling with the clouds of 26, g candles of 26 days ago. Yeah. But, you know, if we could sort of get a close above 127 and a half, that would mean we're sort of getting clear of all candle resistance, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so that'll get us going. Um, and then of course then we've got the descending cloud, so that's still in bear mode, it hasn't turned yet at all, um, but it has worked quite well on the way down um, and it has got you out of your short position probably by about now. Um, also here I think we potentially have a broadening base pattern where you've yep. had three downside mm -hmm. tests, mm -hmm. yep. Yep. Um, two pullbacks and we're on our third one. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping that the rally, this third rally, will result in a break above uh, the recent highs. Yeah. Okay, so that would complete the base. So I'm not only looking at the clouds, I use conventional things as well. Um, and this one also I'm looking for, for a Fibonacci retracement resistance that lies at 128.40. So that would be another sign for me how to build a position um, and a position that I probably hold for, well, if it goes well, I don't know, a month or two. Yeah. Okay, all right, uh, that's uh, sterling against the US dollar. The next uh, chart that you have brought, in fact, this is uh, uh, US crude. Now, you brought uh, put some lines of resistance and support in as well on this, uh, on this chart. Correct. Um, as I say, I'm trying to show you that I'm sort of combining mm. Western stuff mm -hmm. and Japanese stuff. Mm -hmm. and um, So the main uh, diagonal line across the screen here is a trend from several years ago showing that up until uh, the end of uh, last year, we were very much in bull mode and mm -hmm. your weekly clouds were catching, scooping you up along the way, keeping you long. Yep. The moving averages, that 26 week moving average, keeping you long right until the very last moment, until December and then whoops, down we go, off we go 
crash through this fat cloud, which I was quite surprised mm -hmm. that it was so fast, and then below the cloud. So now we're in bear mode, uh, although mm, it's a little bit mixed at the moment. But what I'm trying to show here is how that long-term trend line mm -hmm. is now acting as resistance. Yeah. Uh, I've also done a giant triangle, mm -hmm. a symmetrical triangle, which is totally Western here, uh, which is a consolidation phase. We don't know which way it will break. Um, my hunch is that it's going to be to the downside because my clouds are pointing down right, now. Right. Okay, they're not mm -hmm. working very well because do you see how skinny they are? Yeah. It was really, really skinny here at the April, May. Uh, so they're, they're unlikely to work well. Uh, but they fatten up a bit now. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm hoping that this flat top cloud will yeah. act as a sort of clear resistance level and will start drifting low. I don't expect anything fast. I don't expect fireworks here. But we've got a little bit of a mixed picture, both Western and Japanese style. OK, uh, keeping with the weekly, but moving on to um, your last chart. In fact, you've got two versions of this, I know. You've got a, a version which indicates, I think you've mm -hmm. got um, the yep. sort of middle portion of this. What's, what's happening? This is S&P 500. That's right. What's, um, I mean, the, the first book on this subject that was not in Japanese was written by me in 2007. Right. Uh, and so I introduced this type of charting to, to, to the West. And I think post-2009, where the stock markets around the world really surprisingly rallied very steadily mm -hmm. for one of the steadiest mm. bull moves ever in, in, in Western indices. Um, I think it really was helped. The, 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 this charting method was seen to be really working with the S&P, as this one is here, with the FTSE, with, I mean, you name it. People could see again and again the averages, the weekly averages kicking in, the weekly clouds scooping you up and preventing a disaster. And so you got in very, very early. In the second quarter of 2009, the averages went long for you. Mm -hmm. And then subsequently, the clouds controlled it. The lagging line was supported by the candles themselves, mm -hmm. yeah, of 26 yeah. weeks ago. Yeah. You see the blue one always sort of, you know, it's almost like a shadow of the, mm. the other one, isn't it? Always above, 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 mm. saying, hang on, hang on in there, don't get frightened. This is very much a bull run. And I think this, and in retrospect, is what's given the Ichimoku charts um, so much interest, so much renewed interest. Now, it's not infallible, and it did start to go a bit flaky late 2015, early 2016, where not only did we break that conventional trend line I've put in, but twice you broke below the bottom of the cloud. Mm -hmm. And so your averages became a mess and all the rest of it. And so you had a bit of a rocky period. But then subsequently, and now my chart, hopefully we can widen it out so we get more of the detail. If we start in the first quarter of 2016, you can see how the system kicked in yet again. Yeah. We rallied above the cloud. The moving averages quickly turned positive. The cloud, the top of the cloud scoops it up. I've done a conventional trend line, a diagonal one, and you can see it kept you in right through to the third quarter of 2018. Then it goes haywire again. And what I've now drawn in is a type of Andrew's pitchfork, which are the three horizontal lines, a kind of central one where I feel that the market is in a kind of an equilibrium. An upper one, which has capped since the beginning of 2018, but not so late that year and this year. So we've got some kind of extensions above the top. And do you see the three of them are successively marginally higher. That is not exactly great. So the 2018, um, early first quarter 2018 high is just right. fractionally yeah. lower than the third quarter of 2018 yeah. and fractionally lower in turn than the first quarter 19, yeah? So that's, it's only uh, barely visible, mm -hmm. but it does tell me that above that horizontal line, things are a bit ropey. Right. They're just not. And, y y you know, the risk of another third sharp 
slippage is high at these levels yeah. it's high at these levels were we to get back down to the middle line then you say well hopefully we'll sort of find our feet and we've got the cloud coming in to mm -hmm. to support it there you see how the blue thing starts rising yeah. and meets that middle line yeah. so you know it's only there that I'd feel a little bit more comfortable at the moment I'm very cautious at these levels although the moving averages are still clearly bullish at the moment and the clouds are bullish at the moment and the lagging line has no resistance to speak of at the moment so you wouldn't be short no you're waiting for an indication no. yeah I'm just uncomfortably long yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay all right um, it's a fascinating subject um, I see already this book is on your second that's the second edition which I'm gifting to you, Jeremy, and your it's colleagues, so you can learn all about it. Indeed. That's the second edition. Um, Many revisions. What was the update for? Because you, as you say, you brought it into the consciousness of the Western um, uh, technical analysis community. It was my publisher's idea, actually, that um, the book was still selling well, although right. being a bit long in the tooth. Um, and definitely there was a complete change in, in, in knowledge uh, of readers right. you know when the first book came out it was all just completely brand new and yeah. a bit I used to call them like spaghetti junction charts yeah. you know such a mess of so many lines now that they've been embraced by so many professional mm. and amateur uh, fans of technical analysis yeah. he said well what about trying to show how you yourself Nicole have um, improved the way you look at it read it understand it um, when to follow it, when to ditch it, and, and, and how you work with it now that you've got, you know, 12 years' experience yeah. under your belt. Yeah. Well, look, it's a pleasure. Thanks indeed for dropping by and talking about Jimmy Cook Clouds. Sir Nicole Elliott, uh, a regular guest here at IG and uh, a fellow of the Society of Technical Analysts, Nicole Elliott, an independent te technical analyst, joining us there with an introduction to the Ichimoku Kinku Clouds.